Thanks, Mark. And that's smashing your hand, not your head. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I am a martial artist, uh, so when I say smashing my hand into concrete, uh, it's, it's slightly different than what you might have imagined, you know, punching a wall or something like that. A, a lot of us are a little uncomfortable with that whole process. So um, let me show you what I mean by smashing your hand into concrete. One. Two, three. Oh, oh, darn! I guess I guess it didn't work. Um, we'll see if we can clear that up. You know, with technical issues, we'll we'll fix it and make sure that you get to see that whole thing later. Uh, but you know, that's that's on my uh, YouTube site, and uh, you know, every once in a while, things just don't work the way they're supposed to. So we're just going to move along. Um, good breaks like that actually require a number of things to come together, a number of different traits. And the first one is uh, you need to have a strong foundation. Now, if you look down there at my feet, they are planted firmly on the ground. They are braced against that stanchion there to make sure that I'm not going anywhere. This is where your power comes from, where you have a good, strong foundation. Okay, then you need to have a clear focus. You'll see throughout the entire movement, while I'm doing that break, I never look away from that top slab. In fact, I'm not even looking at that slab. I'm looking at a spot about this big on the slab, in the center. Very focused. In fact, it's amazing. When you do a break like that, your entire world just goes into that one point. You're staying very focused. Third. I picked an appropriate level of challenge. Now, if I went up there and used my elbow to break a two inch stick, it would not be particularly impressive, would it? But if I went up there and tried to use my fingertip to break uh, you know, 16 slabs, it would not be impressive either. It would only be a lot of screaming. <laughs> so we want to make sure that what we picked out, in this case, my, my karate master, he picked out six for me. That was the first time I'd ever done six slabs, uh, and he thought I could do it. So I said, all right, we'll give it a shot. Third up, proper technique. That whole hitting your finger against the, uh, against the, the bricks, that doesn't work so well. You see, I am way up on my feet there. I'm getting my body weight up. You see that my hand has actually gone out of the screen. It's, it's cranked up so high to get the full range of motion. Good technique. And then finally, got to have the full follow through. If I stop at the surface, if I only go that far, I can guarantee it's not going to break. You have actually got to go all the way through. You're actually aiming for the floor. The bricks are just in between you and the floor. So that's how you have a successful break. Now the funny thing is, <clears throat> those same traits apply to asking for help from your network. Seriously, the strong foundation, you gotta have a good mindset about your networking practice. The clear focus, you need to know what you need. And we're gonna talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that later. You have to have an appropriate challenge. If you're asking for too much or the wrong thing, you're not going to get the results you want. You gotta have a good technique. If you don't have good technique, it feels uncomfortable for everyone. And finally, you gotta follow through. If you get those referrals and you don't follow through, you're probably not gonna get, get the results you want and may end up damaging your relationships. So that's what we're gonna be going through today. Those five traits uh, one bit of housekeeping, I am a little hard of hearing. So if you know we start doing some interchange, if you could just speak up and speak clearly so I'm not going, I'm sorry, could you say that but for the third time? <laughs> that would really help out a lot. All right, so let's move on in. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, and I hope you all managed to finish up your breakfast, uh, we're going to do, uh, explore the concepts of having a good mental attitude towards your networking. Uh, we're going to do this with a little bit of uh, a game. Oh, goody. We love games. 
All right, so what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, we've got um, 11 on this side and 11 on this side. So what we'll do is we'll break up into <coughs> about six groups, six groups. All right, so uh, we're going to count off by sixes. We're going to start here. One. <laughs> Two, three, four. Five. Six. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, one, two. All right. You all got your number? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the first step. We're going to be working on, okay, keep your, keep your, member, keep your number in mind. I, I guess I have a quick question for you. Raise your hand if you're a little competitive. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> raise your hand if you're a lot competitive. Okay, uh, raise your hand if the last time you had a family game night, you made someone cry. <laughs> and you liked it. <laughs> okay, I, I see what I'm dealing with here then. <laughs> all right, so this is all about uh, having the right adi mental attitude to get what you want from your number. So what we're going to do first, you've got your number in your head. You are going to go to a place in the room with your, the rest of the people who have your same number. But here's the trick. You can't talk. Ah, Jim, you cannot talk. All right, so first of all, go find a spot in the room with those of your same number, but you can't talk. Now you're going to want to have a work surface, so if you can clear away a space for your work surface. All right, looks like we've got it all, all figured out here. All right, now uh, you can talk now, it's, it's fine. Okay. Uh, I know you're like, I gotta not talk the entire time, I'm gonna die. Um, all right, now send one person from your group up to pick up your envelope. Exactly. Now, do not open your envelope until I tell you to, please. Backwards. So, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. One for you. No, you're not? Okay. One for you, and one for you, and one for you. It came out to six, so that's good. All right, now, everyone, you got to pay attention here. Here are the rules. <clears throat> These rules have been carefully crafted. <laughs> First, do not open your envelope until instructed to do so. I think you're all doing well on that so far. <laughs> you may only use the initial contents of your envelopes to complete the tasks. Only what's in there right now. You may not use the envelope itself. Don't break my envelope. <laughs> and the winner is the first team to finish all four tasks in under eight minutes. Wow. All right, here are the tasks. With the materials in your envelopes, create one four-inch square of white paper, one three-by-five T in green and white paper, one three by four flag, any three colors. And finally, one four link paper chain. And each link has to be a different color. Everybody understand what the tasks are? No. Yep. yep, okay, are you ready? Is everybody ready? Do you have a clear spot to work in? Remember, you may only use the contents of the envelopes. Are you ready? Open your envelopes. Yeah, what, yeah, what, are we allowed to go outside of our group? 
One minute's passed. Well, here's the deal. Like, uh, so this is eight by what? Eight by eleven. So let's have many four-inch squares, and we gotta you pass them out. Paper, so you can use that. We got a ruler. So we get it. Oh, oh, four inches. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we have white paper, but we're gonna need to get some white paper back. But that's what I think we should do. So that's the first test. I bring out white paper. But we're only supposed to use what was in the envelope. Yeah. They have four different colors of paper. White paper. Does that make sense? But six minutes left. Six minutes. Hey, here's the flag. Here's the flag. Thirty seconds. I cut it right, right side. applied to networking and most importantly how did you feel when you opened those envelopes so with your team take two or three minutes Actually got all four four pieces. 
Okay. So let me ask, let me ask, how did you feel when you opened up that envelope and dumped out the contents? Short change. Short change. Short change. Oh, man. What well, else? Not prepared. Not prepared. Got the wheels turning. You got the wheels turning a little bit, yeah. I felt like one of those chef shows where they say, give you a basket of food. Make it a And today's secret ingredient is, yeah. I think we instantly realized, guys, we needed help. We didn't have all the stuff. We just had white paper, and I was like, That's all I had. That's all we got. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you have you ever been handed a task in your life where you did not have all the materials or resources? You need it in order to accomplish it. Yes. 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 Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. And so, what was necessary? Networking. Networking. We had to work. Unity. And, and also, the, the fun thing about this is, I get to see like all the different levels of networking behaviors. I didn't actually see that in this particular group, and, and you don't have to raise your hand if you're guilty of it, but I've seen people steal stuff from other groups. <laughs> Nick, you're smiling. It wasn't you. Okay, just... <laughs> Seriously, they're like... No, yeah, look over there. Is that Elvis? <laughs> now, on a networking scale, have we met people that... They're only in it for themselves. Oh, it doesn't matter who they hurt and what they have to do. They will get what they want out of this networking opportunity. Yes? Yes. yes. You been there with that person? Yes. Are they a great networker? No. 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 All right. Then the next level. The next level is we've got this stuff. We need their stuff. Let's trade. Okay? That's sort of the next level of networking. It's, it's transactional. We have some benefit that they need, they have something that we need, let's just trade, right? And that's pretty good. But sometimes the person you're dealing with has what you need, but you don't have anything that they need. So then you have to look at the next level above that. And I think I saw one or two people actually doing this where it's like, what do you guys need over here? They need it over, they, they have this over here. Let's, let's bring the two of you together making those connections. That's where your mindset has to be in order to be really successful at the networking game, getting referrals, getting results. You have to be known as the person that connects so that you are always in their lives. Now, I also just heard some, some interesting things that sort of tied it, tied it in. Uh, I heard one person say, and I'm not pointing any fingers, <laughs> I, I, I tend to quit fast. <laughs> I'm not looking. Does that go my way? I'm done. Does the referral process go fast? No. No. If things don't, if we're not seeing the results we want, isn't it easy to quit? But you also are the one that says, we all got to work together, right? Yes. So let me ask this. How many groups did we have in here? Six. Six. What was the what was the uh, the um, the the goal the ultimate goal? Do you remember what it, what the ultimate goal was? Here we're gonna back it up. Mm -hmm. What was the, the the goal there? To do all the stuff in eight minutes. Yeah. What's the winner? Whoever did it. Not and only use one. No, read it. Read it. Exactly what no, it says. What is, what is what is the winner? First team to finish all four tests in under eight minutes. All right, we had six groups. How many teams? One. So raise your hand if your team got all four pieces. Yeah, you all did. Right? That's what it's about. You have to think of everyone as being on your team. It's really dangerous to start thinking about a competitive atmosphere. But you made us believe we were competing. I know. I'm so mean. <laughs> <laughs> you are sneaky. I am sneaky. I mean, but does it prove the point? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how often do we think, I mean, I'm in business. It's yeah. a competitive business. Yeah. I have to work hard. How many of you have ever been to a networking event where you went around and did introductions and the person stood up and they, they do pretty much the same thing that you do? Mm -hmm. uh, I hear two people uh, send out cards. <laughs> send out cards. And, and I've been in, in groups like that where they're doing the introductions around, and, and uh, one person, I think they were in marketing or something, and she stood up and she said, well, a lot of my competitors here. Oh. It is exactly like that. <laughs> Suddenly everybody gets silent. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've just injected com competition 
into what should be a collegial relationship, right? Some of my best networking connections are fellow speakers. We can help each other so much. Good networkers, great networkers, don't have competition. They've got colleagues. And then one other thing, and this kind of leads into our next step here. When I gave you the assignment of finding your group, but you couldn't talk, is that a little hard? No. no. Well, I know some of you were like, <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you get the number. But if we don't say what we need, it makes our lives so much more difficult. Would it have been easier to be able to say, yeah, go ahead and talk. Do whatever you need to do. Actually, no. You don't think so? Not in this situation because there's too many people. Everyone yelling. Yelling. Everyone yelling. Yelling. Everyone yelling. 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 One, two, three, eight, four, so. Then everyone, it'd be too much of a cluster. Mm -hmm. This way you just hold up your hand, numbers. Yes. But we still needed to communicate what we needed, yes. right? Yes, communication, yes. Communication is the necessary part. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so that was uh, sort of getting that good foundation. We need to be aware that everyone around us, everyone in our network is our team. We need to be supporting everyone in our network. And I know it sounds exhausting, but it's actually not that hard. Connect them with what they need so that they can be successful, so that you can be successful. All right, let's move on. So we just talked about the good foundation. Now, next up is that clear focus. Clear focus. And... This is something we need to be uh, aware of. When we're coming up with what we need, what we want, specificity. Specificity. Uh, raise your hand if you love cake. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it, raise your hand if you have a very specific kind of cake that you really love. Uh, all right, Adrian, I gotta, I gotta ask you because you're just, you, you were like, you barely contain yourself. I can never contain myself. Black forest cake. Black forest. Oh, very specific. Now, could you describe that for us? Yes, cherry, dark chocolate. Mm. Yes, moist cake. But I don't eat it. But it's really yummy. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm sugar. Okay. Well, let's assume you actually eat yeah, cake. All right. <laughs> well, I'll have a bite. All right. Now, are you willing to play along with something? Yes, always. Okay. So uh, what ha I'm going to I'm going to uh, gesture to you like this. Okay. And when I do this, okay. you're going to say, "Bake me a cake." Okay. All right. Okay. So let's test this out. Bake me a cake. Oh, you gotta, I'm going to hear it. Everybody's oh, got to hear okay. it. Bake me a cake. There we go. All right. Now, Adrian has decided that she would like to have cake. In fact, she wants her very specific black forest cake. And you all heard that kind of make your mouth water a little bit, I'm sure. So she starts walking up to everybody she knows and says, Bake me a cake. Now, there are people who would like to help. Jim would love to help. He says, okay, well, what, what kind of cake do you want? And she just says, Bake me a cake. <laughs> people start kind of avoiding her. Um, but you know, they're not actually crossing the street yet to avoid her. But I mean, there's sort of a okay, it's this sort of thing because every person she walks up to, all she says is, "Bake me a cake." So eventually, Ricardo decides he's going to help out his friend Adrian. All right, because he is such a nice guy. I want cake too. You want cake? <laughs> <laughs> and, actors, you know, just. <laughs> So he asks her, well, what kind of cake would you like? And she says, bake me a cake. Okay, so Ricardo goes home and he says, all right, well, I'm going to bake her a cake. The next day he shows up at Adrian's place with the most beautiful pineapple upside down sauerkraut cake you have ever seen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> pineapple That's what I had in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> now, is Adrian happy about this cake? No. no. Probably not. I mean, I mean, she, she probably loves the fact that Ricardo cared enough about her to make a cake, but it's not the one she wants, is it? Whose fault is it? Adrian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Adrian. She's like, throw Ricardo under the bus. No, because she was being unspecific, right? All she says is, I want a cake. So many of us do that same thing. 
when, we're, when it comes to asking for help from our network, when it comes to asking referrals or recommendations, whatever it is. Uh, maybe you're in, a, you're in a BNI or you've asked for referrals before. Have you ever heard the phrase, I'll keep you in mind? Raise your hand if yes. you've heard that one. Yeah. That's the truth, just like the check is in the mail, um, I, 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 I paid at the office, and let's be friends, right? <laughs> they, will, they will keep you in mind until the next thing comes up and they forget about you. And that could be something as complicated as going to the car. Seriously. <laughs> they, they will not, they, will, they have every good intention but one of the main reasons, there are actually three reasons why you might get that response. And the very first one is you are not being specific. You are not helping them help you. Are you busy in your workday world? Yes. Is it Stephen or Stephen? Stephen. Stephen? Yes. Uh, do you have a lot of stuff going on? No. Do you have a lot, a lot of time to think about someone else's job? Uh, no. No. You've got your own job to run, right? So if, if you walk up to someone and say, when they say, Adrian, how can I help you? And your response is either I don't know or anybody that needs my stuff. Just, just connect me with anybody that needs my stuff, whether that's insurance or realty or financial planning, whatever it is. They don't have time in their lives to figure out your business. So specificity is necessary. Also, as we discovered during the exercise, not everyone has uh, has what we need. At least if that's the, if we only go in with one thing. If we only go in, I'm looking for my clients. Well, they might not be able to help you. So we need to have a good long list so that anybody can help us. Anybody. So let's talk uh, about the uh, the five S's. And this is on that worksheet that you have in front of you there. And if you don't have one of the engagement, what does that mean to you? Lecture hall. What's that? Lecture hall. A lecture hall of some kind, right? Maybe in a college or something. What what other what other things could be speaking engagements? TEDx. TEDx, yeah. Like a keynote speaker. A keynote speaker, sure. Comedy show. A comedy show. Oh, that would be so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's all these different. I mean, that's not telling you anything. That's making you work for me, and you don't have time for that because you are trying to sell shaved ice right now. <laughs> yes. Hmm. All right. So, I need to be more specific. I might say, I am looking for paid speaking engagements with local and state chapters of professional associations. Oh, wow. And I might even go further than that. I might say, I'm looking for an introduction to the program director for such organizations. That's very specific for leadership within those organizations. So I might be looking to meet with the executive director or the president. Very specific. Now, it's entirely possible that you don't know anybody like that, and that's okay, because when I'm specific, it quite often will give an associative memory. You know, I don't know the executive director, but a friend of mine, they belong to the uh, local chapter of the, what was the one I spoke to recently? Uh, it was the uh, Sanitary Supplies Association. <laughs> yes, they got one of those. Because <laughs> there's an association <laughs> for everything. So, be very specific when you are coming up with your sales. So, what would be a very specific sale concept for you? <clears throat> commercial uh, lending. Commercial lending, okay. Yes. Who? Cool. So, it would be somebody that needs a commercial property. Okay, so what sort of person would need a commercial property? A business owner. A business owner, what kind of business owner? Uh, successful business owner. <laughs> <laughs> How big is the business? <laughs> How big is the business? Any six man, right. How big is the business? Yeah. Uh, ten million. So ten million in revenues? Yes. How many how many employees? Uh, hundred. Uh, where are they gonna be located? Down river. Down in the down river area. Yeah. Okay. So now you're a little bit more specific. I'm looking for business owners <coughs> in the down river area who have ten million in revenues and a what'd you say, hundred employees. Is that a little bit more specific? Mm -hmm. Could you give an example of that maybe? A manufacturing, so so you might be able to pick one, you know, such as ABC Manufacturing. Is that more likely to give you an idea of how to help her? Yes. Yes. Be specific. 
All right, that's sales. Now, not everybody's going to know your clients. So the next one is a stepping stone. A stepping stone. Yeah, I only gave you the S's, so you got to write them down. <laughs> a stepping stone. Now, that would be something that gets you closer to the sale. So for me, it might be uh, any speaking opportunity. So I, I speak at service clubs like Rotary and uh, um, Kalanis, things like that, because they are always looking for an opportunity to have speakers come in. So if you know of any speaker, any uh, service clubs in this general area that might need a speaker, if you could connect me, that would be awesome. And specifically, I'm looking for the president of such organizations. Is that specific enough? Does that put something in your head? It is. Yes. That's what we're going for. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, other stepping stones might be an opportunity to be on someone's podcast. It might be to uh, be able to write a blog post and have it posted somewhere that's, uh, uh, where you become a thought leader. Um, whatever that stepping stone, maybe uh, you're a realtor and you need to have you'd like to have connections to local uh, presidents of homeowners associations. Any of those things are stepping stones to potentially your ultimate sale. All right, moving on. Suppliers, people or resources that help you do your job. So they might be employees. They could be vendors. They could be pieces of software. Anybody heard of this chat GPT thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a Wouldn't you love to have an expert working with you? Do we have an expert on chat GPT here? No. Wouldn't it be awesome to have someone who really knew about chat GPT and how to set it up? I had a guy uh, we just saw at, uh, at NSA Michigan. He came in and he was talking about chat GPT. He says, the problem everybody, the mistake everybody makes is they treat it like Google. You don't treat it like Google, you treat it like an intern. You've got to explain to it what you need so that it can go out and do it for you. I know that does not have anything to do with what we're talking about right now, but wouldn't it be cool to have someone like that on your team? That would be a supplier of some kind. All right, uh, moving on. S number four, the strategic partners. For me, strategic partners are my fellow speakers. These are the people who, su who support the same clients that you do, but don't compete with you. So who might be a strategic supplier for a uh, financial advisor? Accountant, estate planning, attorney. All those people that mm -hmm. they say, you need to talk to a financial planner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how about um, credit union? Who's a, who might be a... Kind of the same. Kind of the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, you might be potential strategic partners, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So be, and again, you still got to be specific about what you're looking for, because for me, all professional speakers aren't necessarily, you know, if, if they're uh, uh, women's empowerment, we don't necessarily have a good connection. But sales, that might be, a, we might be serving the same groups then. So. All right, the last one, and I think this is one of the most powerful ones because it allows you to work with almost anybody and get results. Suggestions, advice, recommendations, insights. When I was first starting out as a professional speaker, I thought one of the uh, uh, groups I would, might want to connect with would be HR professionals. Because a lot of times they bring in training to organizations. And I was uh, uh, introduced through a third party to a, an HR professional. Her name is Linda Peterson. And uh, we met for coffee. For the very first time, I'd never seen this woman ever in my life. We'd exchanged a couple emails just to organize the, the connection. We sat down, chatted for 15 minutes about just anything, Disney, kids, whatever. And after 15 minutes, she said, Greg, how can I help you? Well, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to connect better with the HR market. And I, I'm brand new to this. I really don't know what I'm doing. So what would be your advice be? Oh, my goodness. She started going through all of my talks and telling how I could rename some of these things to be more appropriate for the HR market. And then she said, you know what, there are three people that I want to connect you with right now. Let me get out their names so that I can go ahead and, and just make that connection. Um, and then 
a few days later, she called me and said, you know, I'm going to be speaking with a relocation firm in the near future. Would it be okay if I pass your name along? No, you know, that would be too much trouble. <laughs> How awesome was all that? All that because I asked for her advice. The cool thing is, when you ask for advice, when you ask for suggestions, they get to choose the level of response. Think about how much different it would have been if I, if she said, how can I help you? Well, Linda, what I'd really like, could you go through my entire list of speeches and tell me which ones would be appropriate for the market? Maybe give me some serious, in-depth advice. And hey, while you're at it, could you connect me with some of your uh, decision makers in your Rolodex right now? Would that be okay? What do you think her response would have been? <laughs> I'll keep you in mind. Yeah. I'll keep you in mind. What's a Rolodex? Exactly. <laughs> What's a Rolodex? She knows what a Rolodex is. I know I'm dating myself. Actually, I never had a Rolodex, but just. I love the, it. It's a good, good word. Does everybody know what a Rolodex is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not I'm not going over your head on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, she would have been. I'll, I'll keep you in mind. Thank you very much. I never. In fact, that was probably. 10, 12 years ago now, and she and I are going to be meeting next week for a virtual coffee just to catch up on what's been going on. Yes, Linda. But the reason you would have gotten a negative response to that is because you had not taken the time to build a relationship first. Yeah, well, but by only 15 minutes. You can build a relationship in five minutes. Yes, yes. I don't, I, I'm not going to walk up, you know, if I've never met Jim before, hey, Jim, could you give me some advice on my business? You'd be like, who are you? <laughs> Right? Advice. Yes, you, you have to have a conversation with yeah. them yeah. first <laughs> before you start asking. But he might come up with something, though. He might. <laughs> he might. <laughs> so, but there are some the five areas that we can we can ask for help in. It doesn't have to only be a straight referral, bottom line contract client. It can be any of these things. And when we ask for help, we're making ourselves vulnerable. What do you think that does to the connection? They want to help you. They want to help you. Reciprocity. It strengthens the connection. And so many times we feel like we're, oh, we're imposing. No. How do you feel? How do you feel when someone comes up to you and says, hey, could you help me out with something? Depends on who the person is. Well, <laughs> 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 but it, it they connect you to them, right? Yes. Someone asks you for advice. Ooh, I am the expert. Thank you. <laughs> it's a compliment, right? All right, so what we're going to do next is uh, we are going to take some time and give you about five minutes to try and fill in some ideas in each of these categories. Fill in some ideas for yourself in each of these categories. So I'm going to give you five minutes, uh, so it'll be about 9.20. So go ahead. Or it's just 9.21 and 24 seconds. <laughs> specific. I am very specific. I'm a computer programmer. What can I say? Try to be specific.
if you've already filled all the categories, put more in there. <laughs> Okay, about one more minute. <clears throat> All right, if we can bring it back together now. It's a lot easier to bring it back together when everybody's not talking. <laughs> All right, do you have a few things written down? Some ideas of things you could ask for. Why do we want to make this long list? Why do we want to make this long list? In case other people don't have what you need. So that... You're covering bases, essentially. Right, right. So, you know, uh, you know if I'm talking with... Um, Talking with Steven, and I know he doesn't have any any. He's not connected to my clients, right? You maybe you are. I don't know. I'm not putting words in your mouth, but he might have some advice on a good accountant. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, speakers actually accountants are really big for us because we speak all over the country. We have to pay taxes for every place we speak. Yeah. Yes, so you need to have an accountant who can do that. So, um, all right. So now we've got a good list of things that we can possibly ask for. Now here's the next thing. We need to have an appropriate challenge. We need to make sure that, that what we're asking for doesn't exceed the level of the relationship we've built. And remember I said before, there are three reasons why someone might give you the, I'll keep you in mind. The first one being a lack of clarity. Well, these are the other two. The first is their ability. Their ability. And the second is their risk tolerance. So, for example, you know, my mom, she loves me. She really does. We're actually business partners. So, you know, we work together, we are tightly connected, and I know she would do anything for me. If I said, I want to, uh, would you connect me with um, uh, 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 
Chris Evans, the guy who played Captain America. Mom, would you introduce me to Chris Evans? She'd be willing, right? But she doesn't have that connection. She doesn't have, she's not able to do so. And then on the other side, you might say, you know, uh, um, would you be willing to introduce me to your grandparents? Because they, I, I've got some, some products that they really need to, to learn about. That'd be like, oh, right? That's, that's, you have the ability, but no. I've, I've stepped beyond your, your risk tolerance, your willing to, willingness to connect me. Now, it might be, to a, we might eventually develop a relationship to the point you're like, yeah, I need you to talk to my grandparents. But at a, at a first, first step, we've got to be careful about that. So what we need to do is make sure that whatever we're asking for is within the ability and the risk tolerance, but also doesn't under-ask. You know, if I've got, again, my mom, I know that she could connect me with a number of uh, 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 heads of, of uh, local chambers. She's got all that capability, but if I say, hey, mom, could you just give me some advice on this? No, I know she can connect me. Why not just say, hey, mom, will you connect me with the leader of the Sylvania ch uh, chamber? Why, why, why wouldn't I just ask, if I ask for just this little thing, why wouldn't I do that? What's wrong with asking for something really small? That's all you'll get. Say it again? I said that's all you'll get. Yes, yeah, that's all you're going to get is something small. You're, you're losing out on opportunity, right? So our next step, you're going to adapt some of these requests that you wrote down and think about how you would adjust them. So it might not, you know, I, I might not be asking for a specific person. You know, I know you know Bob Smith, the head of ABC Corporation. Okay, but we don't know each other well enough for you to introduce me directly. Right. Would you happen to know any leaders of local corporations that you'd be willing to introduce me to? So that's, that's, that's a step down. Or I'm looking for some advice. How can I connect with leaders of local corporations? Then you get to choose the response. You might be able to say, okay, let's, let's work our way through this. So in, in, in some ways, why don't you, uh, you can adapt some, but also take a look at the ones you wrote down. You know, are these, uh, the ones you wrote down, are these for relationships that you've built over years? Or are these for relationships that just started out? You've been talking with them for five minutes, 15 minutes about Disney World. All right, so take uh, just a couple minutes to look over those requests. Figure out which ones are going to be for high level connections, which ones are gonna be for brand new connections, which ones might be very specific. If you can write down a name next to that request, write it down. So see, when that third one down, do you know someone who can specifically get that for you? Strategic partner. So who's your strategic partner? What's that? Well, I'm, I, the third one on your list. I don't know which one. I didn't even look, so I don't know if you even have three on your list. <laughs> but look at that third one down. Who can give you that? Who can make that connection for you? That's why I gave you that column over there. It says uh, referral sources. So who could specifically get that for you? They would be comfortable asking them. It's within their ability and they, they'd be comfortable making that connection for you. Let me just ask this. If you have the choice between under asking and over asking, which should you go for? Under. 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 If you over ask, what's the danger? Yeah, you, you're, you could damage the relationship. Right? I mean, think of it, think of it this way. Um, 
Uh, well, I, I, I know, I, I might have, uh, some of you may have seen this, but it's still, still worth doing just to, to show how it is. Um, raise your hand if you uh, have a car. And you like your car. <laughs> and you're willing to play along if I give you a present. <laughs> All right, Jim, you're a little enthusiastic, but let's go ahead. <laughs> All right, Jim, you and I have known each other for a while, but let's pretend, okay? Let's pretend that you and I have just met at a networking event. Okay. Okay, we've been talking for five minutes, and you think this could be a good professional connection, right? Right. All right, stop. Uh, Jim, what kind of car do you drive? 2022 Explorer. It's a nice car. Um, I need to drive down to Toledo tonight. Can I borrow your car? Borrow it? <laughs> or do you need a ride? I, I, no, I, no, I, just, I, just, I just want to borrow your car. You, know, you, don't need to, you don't need to be there. I just need to borrow it. It'll be okay? And we met for five minutes. For five minutes? No. No. Oh. I got to be somewhere, no matter where. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to wash his hair. Yeah, I, mean, you know, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but. Think about it. You wouldn't you wouldn't lend your car to a guy you'd know for five minutes, right? No, no, no. Okay, Jim. Let me ask you a question though. Which do you value more, your car or your reputation? <laughs> there shouldn't be that long a pause. Jim. <laughs> reputation. Reputation. Yes. Thank you. That's the right answer. Reputation. I've I had actually I one guy who said. I don't know, they're both in pretty bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, of course, we value our reputation more than any material object, right? Mm -hmm. So if Jim is unwilling to lend me his car after a five minute conversation, why would he lend me his reputation? And most of what we want through our networking is someone else putting their reputation on the line, right? I mean, if Jen recommends me for her local association's speaking uh, event, and I go in and stink up the place. I look bad, but it damages her reputation too. So that's why we have to be careful. We make sure that we have the, the strong enough connection so that they are willing to put their relationship on the line. All right, so that's the appropriate challenge. Moving on, now we gotta talk about proper technique. Oh. How to actually ask. It's so hard. Everybody's like, I don't want to ask. It's, it's difficult because I think we have sort of a mental buildup. It's, it's either, well, I, I think of it like movies. There's a couple of movies that sort of represent what I think most people think about when they are thinking about asking for referrals. Did we recognize this guy? Yeah. What, what's the phrase? Yeah, may, please, sir, I want some more. Please, sir, please. It's begging. It's begging, right? How do we, does everybody, how would it, do you raise your hand if you love the idea of begging? No? Just me? Okay. <laughs> no, we don't like to beg. We didn't get into business to beg. Are you causing trouble? Yes, I'm a Okay. A beggar and a quitter? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out one day. <laughs> All right, well, there's that, there's that option, which no one seems to go for. Or there's this guy. Oh, um, <laughs> yes. I've done you a favor, and in the future, it may never happen, but I may request a favor of you. Oh, who wants to impose on everyone around them? <laughs> That's that transactional mindset. You know, I'm going to do something for you because, and now you owe me. You owe me. Raise your hand if you like that idea. Just me. Okay. I like a third movie, a different movie. And I guess I should tell you up front, I'm kind of a nerd. So, anybody recognize this guy? <laughs> what movie? Star Wars. Specifically, which one? A New Hope, the fourth episode, but really it's the first one. Everyone knows it was the first Star Wars. The Jedi Mind Trick. Everybody remember that one? The Jedi Mind Trick? They're, 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 they're being stopped. Why are they being stopped? Those are the droids they're Yeah, yeah. And what does he say? What does he say? These are not the droids you're working for. And the Stormtrooper, what does he say? Move along. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. 
move along, right? It's just that, that rep repetition. It's sort of a mirroring concept, and we do it naturally. So if we would like someone else to ask us, how can I help you? What should we do? Ask them, exactly. Linda, thank you. I was a little concerned that nobody was going to get the whole reference there. but <laughs> yeah. We ask first, how can I help you? How can I help you? Now, please, don't do this as a technique. <clears throat> Everyone knows when they're being techniqued, and nobody likes it. It feels manipulative, it feels icky, and that will hurt the relationship but ask because you genuinely want to help. How can I help you? We're now going to practice that. So what you're going to do is, I think actually we'll just, we can go, with, go by tables. It just makes it easier so we don't have to move around. Uh, and that seemed to cause a lot of consternation earlier. So just work with your table, turn to face inward so you can all hear each other. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to ask the other people in your group for something. But how we're going to do it is we're going to assume you've already done the I've asked you how I can help you sort of thing. So everybody in the group, so if it's your turn, these two are going to say, how can we help you? I want you to get triggered. So as soon as you hear that, you are ready with your list. Take a kick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, First we need sugar. Do you want to switch to another part of that? All right. So does everybody understand what you're going to do? Each person, in turn, gets to ask for something from their list. And when it's their, when it's their turn, you are going to ask them, how can I help you? Everybody got that? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting in touch with the person that that person. Yeah. Well, it's not even that. A lot of times, it's not the business owner that deals with the that's how you can help me. There's somebody that I know. Can we get you together? Sure. How about you? Can you first have a platform? You can help me. I know, but see, but doesn't that make you feel like you can do it? Yeah. For you, one of my diverse, you said on some of the bits was, I'm saying we're going to go So I would love to thank all of you. I mean, we're going to go with that shirt. But you may have to eat it for the events. How many people do you have left? Raise your raise a hand with how many people you have left. You have three people left? Go faster. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's going to be a lot. I'm not going to say it's going to be a lot. 
that one is on December 2nd. All right, we should be on the last person now, the last person. Okay, if you can start bringing it to a close. Bring it to a close. Last person gets done. All right. All right. If you can hear the sound of my voice, clap once. If you can hear the sound of my voice, clap twice. If you can hear the sound of my voice, clap three times. Yeah, we didn't get to the point where it was an actual standing ovation. But that <laughs> All right, did everyone get a chance to, to tell the group what they needed? Yes. 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 Excellent. All right. Now here's the important question. I know this is this is kind of a, a it's a little bit rushed and a little bit artificial. Raise your hand if you found some way to be able to help someone else in your group. Anyone else? All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, to have this many in, what, basically five minutes, you each got a chance. So there's a certain amount of power to this, isn't there? All right, now, great! Now you're asking for things and you're able to get the results, or you're able to at least get connected to those results. Now what's the next most important thing? Oh, gotta follow through. Gotta follow through. And the very first one, Got to react when those come in, when those opportunities come in. Let's suppose, remember the back at the beginning, Adrian wanted that cake? I still do. <laughs> and let's suppose, let's suppose Ricardo actually baked exactly what you wanted. That was that German black forest, black forest, forest cake, cake, right? The black forest cake. And he brought it over. She said, oh, thank you so much. And she put it on the counter and let it sit there. And maybe she accidentally knocked it off the counter, but she picked it back up and kind of put it all back on the plate. She let it sit there for about four weeks. And then, then, then Ricardo comes over and sees this moldy, messed up, ugly cake that had obviously never been eaten. Is he ever going to bake her a cake again? No. Well, if you pay for it. If you pay for it. <laughs> he's going to charge you double. <laughs> Seriously, though. And the problem is people do this with their referrals all the time. Someone sends you a message saying, hey, I've got a possible connection for you. I'd love to make an introduction. And it sits in their email box for how long? I don't understand it. And it gets moldy. And it gets stale. And it messes up a possible relationship, doesn't it? So we need to react. When those opportunities come in, we need to react right away. We can't wait. Otherwise, it will damage the relationship. OK, so react for up. Uh. I have a question for you on that. What if you refer the person or the referral to your supervisor and they sit on it? What's your recommendation for? Oh, so you are the referring party? You're trying to make so that connection? So here's these people that want this. What and I, your supervisor is just sitting on it. Okay. Oh, the supervisor is sitting on it. Well, then I would I would I would contact the supervisor and say, Hey, I just wanted to find out a little bit. How did it go talking with that person? Oh, I haven't yet. Well, is, do you have that on your schedule? Yeah. When were you planning on following up? So it doesn't matter if it's your supervisor. Just keep. It's it's it's. Because I want to take it back. 
<laughs> well, then you might, you might even say, yeah, uh, yeah, do you think you'll actually be able to uh, work on this? If not, uh, there's a, someone else that, that I, I could pass this off to. You know, uh, no, I, I understand you're, you're busy right now. You've got a lot on your plate. If this isn't going to work for you right now, is it okay if I pass this off to someone else? I bet they're going to say, no, I want it. But still. Either way, I just want it done. Yeah. So I would, I would I just. Sometimes we're afraid of that lie. Like, that's my boss. I, but they're, I don't, they're another person. Acknowledge that they miss, they're busy and they don't have time to deal with this right now. Then if it's okay, I'll just pass this off to someone else. I mean, has, has anybody tried to get some work done around their house and they've got their favorite handyman that they always work with, but you can't seem to get on their calendar? Anybody? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Paul, you know, I apologize. I, I know you're really busy right now, but we really need to get this done. If you can't handle it right now, do you have a recommendation of who might be able to take care of it for me? I've done that with our handyman all the time. Just be polite about it. That works with like referral groups too. If you're looking for a plumber, you can invite a plumber to come to BNI or Chamber Connections and say, well, if you can't, you know someone who can. Yep. Now they have to give you their competition. So. One or the other, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah. react first. <laughs> All right, now reflect. Reflect. And I don't mean sit there and go, hmm, let me think about that. No, what I mean is you need to reflect well on them. If someone gives you a referral, you need to put in the extra 10% on that one. If you've made that connection because, well, why? Why do you think you need to put in the extra 10%? Let them know you care. care. Yeah, and it's their reputation, yeah. Yeah. right? We might be okay with our reputation getting a little dinged every once in a while, but you ding their reputation, how well is that gonna go for you? Not, Not well at all. So make sure you're reflecting amazing. I mean, I know you're all amazing at your jobs, yeah, but a little extra. Report. Report back to them. Let them know how it went. If it went well, hey, I gotta tell you, Jen, that was a perfect connection for me. Thank you so much. That was awesome. And they, they decided to bring me in. Thank you. Any more like that, please. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. What if it was a perfect one, but I didn't get in. Why should I still report? So I know it's going to Right. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you're letting her, letting Jen know this was a perfect one for me. Keep it. I like that kind. Yes, please keep doing that. But also, I tell Jen, yeah, it looks like they're going to go some other way. Jen goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm oh, going no, to give not. them a call. <laughs> <laughs> And Jen is terrifying, so <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and then, what if it wasn't a perfect one? Jen, I really appreciate you're going through that effort for me. I don't usually work with prison groups, <laughs> but I appreciate the connection. I'm really what I'm really looking for is this. I'm not trying to hurt her feelings. I really appreciate that you're going through the effort, but. <clears throat> She's taking time. Let, let's educate a little bit, right? So report back on how well it went. Next up, reciprocate. How can I help you? Thank you so much for that connection. It really has made a difference in my job. How can I help you now? Cash. <laughs> she, the, the woman knows what she wants. <laughs> and what if I can't? What if I can't connect her with a client? What if I can't connect her with a client? Find somebody who can. I could find someone. I could, there could be a, a stepping stone there, right? Remember that list of five S's that we came up with? Hey, you know, I don't know any of your clients, but are you look? Are you having any challenges in the business right now? I mean, we all are, aren't we? Yeah. So who can I connect you with to help out with that? Mm -hmm. Part of growing your network is so that you are a resource for everyone around you. So that everybody knows you're the guy to come to. All right, and finally, and this one we have to be a little careful about. Rewarding. You know, rewarding can be something as simple as a thank you note. Acknowledge, thank you, I really appreciate this. This means a lot. It could go up to the point, I, I, well, my, my sales coach, he actually, uh, if you got three people into his sales course, he would send you on a vacation to Chicago. All 
right. Mm -hmm. And I took advantage of it. I mean, my wife and I, that was our fifth anniversary. So. But what's, what, we have to be a little careful about that because then people wonder, are, is this really a good connection? Is this really something that's going to benefit me? Or are you only doing this so that you can get that reward? So you have to be a little, you might even want to come out and say, you know, listen, I just, just so you know, he does give rewards for referrals. I'm not doing this because of that. I'm doing it because, honestly, I think this is a good benefit for you. Be transparent about it. But there, there's even stipulations you can put on rewards. So, example, like at the beginning of the, the summer, spring, I was looking for more employees. So the employees I had, if you refer somebody and they're with me for 30 days, you get $50 or $100. So I made it to where, hey, do you know I need referrals? Who do you know that wants a summer job? Yeah. And then, if, but, if, but the stipulation, they have to stay with me because I let people go or people have had to quit because of other obligations, sports, or whatever. So, but if they're with me for that 30 days, then, then my employee gets out And of there's the nothing work. wrong, depending on the level of the, the, the referral you're getting. You know, if, if you know, someone gets a contract with a tier one uh, auto supplier, that's probably a pretty big price item. So there's nothing wrong with a gift of some kind, as long as it's within parameters. I know that, so financial planners, you probably got some real strict mm -hmm. limits yes. on what you're yes. allowed to accept, Very right? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as long as, as long as you're within the limits of that, I really appreciate it. Can I just take you out to lunch? I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. So just be aware of that, but there's nothing wrong with a thank you note, with a, with a lunch, with whatever it is that you want to reward and re recognize them for. All right, so that is the full five traits for a for a breakthrough success. Um, I want to, let's see, it's 9.50, we're supposed to end at 10, right, Mark? So uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, do, if you have a chance for some Q&A. So turn to the person next to you and come up with a really good question about networking. So turn to the person next to you and come up with a really good question about networking. You've got 60 seconds, go! <laughs> he turned, there was no one there. <laughs> 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 All right, your 60 seconds is up. Bring it back to the front with your amazing and insightful questions about networking. Dawn! So, you are, we're looking to get out of our comfort zone of down the river. Where can we go to network to get some bigger, potential bigger exposure and, and the bigger companies like Ford or... Um, Joe Lewis or whatever. Well, Little Caesars Arena, whatever they name it. I can help. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I was going to ask you the question: Who are you trying to connect with? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so if you're trying to connect with, uh, and this is a very specific instance, uh, have you looked into uh, the Women's Business Council? The Women's Business Council of uh, Southeast Michigan, I believe it's called. But uh, it, it used to be. You know, I can't remember what it was called now. But they basically are um, where small businesses connect with big business. Okay. And so you can network with them. Um, in fact, that's where I, believe it or not, I met some folks from Kellogg, and they brought me in to speak. Wow. So. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. That's the first question, so that makes it easy now, because someone else has already started. One more question. Jim. Suppose you're looking for partners. You have a gala coming up, and you would love them to be sponsors. How would you approach them and say, hey, we're looking to see if you'd like to sponsor our gala? Well, first of all, you need to meet those people, right? Okay. So who are you trying to meet? People that are willing to be a sponsor at a who? gala. In specifics, say car dealers. So you're looking to meet car dealers. 
uh, that, that might be willing to sponsor an event. Right. All right. Raise your hand if you know any car dealers. Uh, okay, looks like there's a bunch of people you need to talk to. Okay. <laughs> Does that help? That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. Just one more. I'm looking for grant writers to help the um, people who are uninsured um, help wise. So you're looking for grant writers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you might check out uh, organizations which support nonprofit uh, enterprises, because a lot of them will have grant writers that can help you. Well, there we go. You know, it's funny. I, I, I give for, I've given this uh, presentation before at a realtors conference, and we did all this. You know, break it down, be very specific, and all that. And someone came up to me afterward. There's a line to want to come up and talk to me. And the first person in line she said, "I don't see how this works." <laughs> really, I just don't see how this works. You mean like, I mean, I'm looking for a realtor to sell my parents' uh, vacation home in Silver Lake, um, and I can't do it because I don't have I'm not licensed yet there. So you think if I just tell someone I'm looking for that, and the person literally behind her in line says, "Well, I'm licensed to sell <laughs> in Silver Lake." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the network is all around you. You just have to to reach out to it. All right. Uh, I will stick around afterward if you have any other questions. Um, one of the things I do like to do at the end of every one of my programs is give away one of my books. You've heard a few people talking about it already, and if you've already want, if you've already got a copy of the book, I have an audio program here you can win instead. Um, this is what happens when a computer programmer tries to learn how to network. Um, computer programmers are very systematic, very methodical, very process oriented, and I. When I started networking as a computer programmer, I was terrible at it. I was awful. I would go to networking events, grab my breakfast, go sit in the corner, and be kind of annoyed when people would sit with me. <laughs> um, but over time, I learned, and what I did is I kind of synthesized everything I learned about being successful at a networking event into a book called Hello in a Handshake. And as Mark said, they've had this as part of the book club here. Um, and actually, I know that there is a credit union um, near us where... It's required reading before you get to represent them at a networking event. Wow. So I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, so what we do is we have a little drawing. Um, so what I'll need you to do is take out your business card. If you don't have one, I've got blank ones on the end of the tables here. So you can go ahead and grab one of the blank ones. If you're using a blank one, please put your name and your email address clearly written on the card. <laughs> Clearly written. I, I am not a pharmacist. I cannot discern gobbledygook. Now, whether or not you're using a handwritten one or a professionally printed one, on the back of the card, put the letters R S T. R S T. Huh? How many can we put in? Yep, Only one card. <laughs> Dawn. <laughs> All right. Now, if you had a question that didn't get answered, or you didn't feel comfortable asking, or you just want to reconnect with me, circle R to request a contact. R to request a contact. Now, and this would be really cool if I get everybody, what's, what's the question that you're going to ask? How can I help, right? Okay, there we go. This is how you can help me. <laughs> if you belong to uh, another uh, group, an association, or you're part of a business that has annual meetings, and you think a message about networking would be beneficial to them, circle S for a possible speaking opportunity for a speaking opportunity and I'll contact you find out who we can help and then at the end I know that no matter how good a speaker I ever get to be one time in front of you for an hour and a half is not going to transform your lives miraculously when it comes to networking so I set up a weekly newsletter it's the, the it's networking tips if you'd like to receive the tips circle T you may circle more than one if you like if you never want to see me or hear from me again, don't circle anything. You can still win. And when you are done, pass your cards to the center and we'll put them in the little box here. 
Now, I used to actually pass the box around. Um, but one time I was speaking in a group, there was about 50 people in the audience. And uh, I started thinking it's starting. It, it came back, you know, we started with the box passing around, and it, and it came back to the front. And so I, of course, you know, we get the part, you gotta shake it to make it fair, right? Right. There was one card in there. <laughs> no, I could understand two or three people not, not participating, but 49 seemed a little excessive. And so I looked over at the last guy. Everybody else looked over at the last guy. He had dumped everybody else's cards out, but his name. He said, what, I'm from New York. You got to eliminate the competition. So we don't pass the box around anymore. What was that? Point of the whole they point. missed the point, yes. All right, uh, drum roll, please. Oh, great marks, yes. <laughs> All right, and the winner is Ed Moss. Yay. Ed, all right. All right, one last, one last story because I'm a storyteller and I have to tell stories. I still remember my very first break I ever did. Oh, I guess I should be fair. One, we need to see the break. Two, three. Bravo. All right. The very first break I ever did, um, it was actually just a board break. And, uh, I remember my instructor taking us to the side. And he said, all right, you want to know the secret of how you're going to successfully break this. You ready? Don't tell anybody else. Are you ready? Hit it really hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we laugh, but it's true. Yeah. You've got to go through, you've got to hit it with faith that it's going to happen. It actually only hurts if it doesn't break. Yeah. So you have to hit it really hard. And the same thing is true when you're looking for your referrals, your recommendations, your rewards from networking. You've got to go forth with intent. You have got to intend to do this. You've got to intend to get the results. And then remember, the team is all around you and they're ready to help. Have a good time. Take care. Thank you.